Well, ladies and gentlemen, today's podcast is uh, another in a series of borderline or dark horses for the Hockey Hall of Fame. When I do this, I want you to think of it, his whole career, not only the, the Swedish League, not only the NHL, but international. Now, Matt Naslin was considered probably one of the best Swedish players ever to play in the NHL. The, the Petit Vicar, the little Viking, uh, came into the Montreal Canadiens, uh, what do you call it, uh, I, in the 1979 NHL entry draft. He continued to play in Europe for a number of seasons in the Swedish League League, but he was a major prospect in junior that uh, was, uh, uh, the scouts were really taking notice because he was a very quick left winger, not the biggest player in the world, 5'7", 170 pounds. Uh, and uh, uh, playing uh, left wing, uh, you know, there's some great Swedish left wingers over the years, but he made it look good. Matt Nasson's uh, playmaking and scoring is, uh, uh, you know, key operation on Montreal's uh, top line after Lafleur moved on. Really helped Montreal be win the cup in '86, uh, got him back to the Stanley Cup Finals in '89. After in '87, where some bad refereeing against the Flyers stopped Montreal's quest for a Stanley Cup revert that year. So technically, he could have led Montreal to three Stanley Cup Finals in. Um, in four years. Now, again, like I said, he was selected in the second round, 37 overall in that very big and important 1979 internal entry draft, which included uh, draftees from the WHA. Now, after uh, a number of years in Sweden, he joined the Canadians for the 82-83 campaign and he became the first European-born player to play for the Canadians. His rookie season of 82-83, he scored 71 points in 74 games, and he was the third team, the third leading scorer behind Guy Lafleur and Ryan Walter. Now, he was a left winger that year in the NHL All-Star rookie team. And um, I, I think the reason why Nassim was uh, so uh, popular in Montreal, he remind people of Henri Richard, remind people of Yvonne Cordelier, but he was very smooth. He wasn't the fastest skater. He wasn't the, the best playmaker, wasn't the best shooter, but it seemed like most times when he had an opportunity to... to uh, Make his scoring play better, he would do it. Uh, now, his best initial season uh, actually was historic in 85 86. He notched 43 goals and 67 assists, 110 points that year, and led him eight in the NHL that season. And he also became the first Montreal player to drop 100 points since the third did it in 79 80, and he's the last Montreal Canadian to uh, reach 100 points uh, in a season or finish in the league top 10. Now, we set 67 assists that year were an initial record for left-wingers until Kevin Stevens of the Penguins not 59 in 1992. Now, uh, in, a, in the 1986 Stanley Cup playoffs, he led much on scoring with 19 points in the 23rd Cup. He also led the Habs in scoring in the next season, but uh, he had 30 points less than that big year, but still 80 points. Each point was a huge. Now, uh, he rarely uh, took a bad penalty or would lose his temper. He never logged board in 19 penny minutes in any season during his career. And he was named the 1988 winner of the Lady Bing Trophy, uh, beating, of all people, Wayne Gretzky in the voting. Uh, he's only one of two Habs to ever win the Lady Bing, following Cole Blake in 1946. Now, his uh, all, a big uh, claim to fame again, 1988 NHL All-Star game, as he notched five assists, which established a record, and he was instrumental in the uh, Mario setting the All-Star game record uh, with six points because he set up uh, Mario on a few uh, counters that game. Um, after the 1990 season where he only scored uh, Bears for 20 goals, he decided to return to Europe, played for three, uh, three seasons in Sweden and one in Switzerland. He did return to the NHL to play in Boston in the lockout shortened 95 season, but retired from hockey right after. He ended up his career in Montreal at a point of game pace with 612 in 617 games. So you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, you had 20 years as a pro at the highest level, uh, you know, in the Swedish Elite League, uh, getting 124 goals, 279 assists. But his international play really stands out because from 1977 to 1994, he probably played in every major tournament that Sweden was in. The only time he didn't play when Montreal would advance in the playoffs. Now, he played in three World Junior Championships. He played in uh, 
five world uh, championship events and played twice in the Olympics. And uh, he won an upset gold medal with Sweden against Canada in uh, 1994. Now, uh, he also won a bronze in Lake Placid. And world championships, of course, won a gold, yeah, silver and bronze, 91 in Finland when uh, Sweden won gold, 81 in, uh, that, uh, in the home rink, he won silver. In 1979, he won bronze, where he was just right uh, coming, out of, uh, uh, coming out of junior. That year, actually, he played at the World Junior Hockey Championship and at the World Championship, uh, quite, uh, quite a few. He also played in three Canada Cups in 84, 87, and 91. And that's where I come in. He doesn't have the numbers, traditional numbers for a Hockey Hall of Fame player, but he's international play. You've got to compare him to uh, Trechak and Manomansky and uh, other people have gotten in like that. Uh, he's also considered probably a top five Swedish player of all time, uh, playing going to five world championships. Uh, you know, uh, he, he did get a chance to play for Sweden against one of the NHL's best players. And uh, he won silver to Canada Cup in 84, but he, uh, he reached the semifinals twice. So, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> he's got an Olympic gold medal, he's got a Stanley Cup, he's got a World Championship, he's got Canada Cup silver, he's got an Olympic uh, gold medal. You know, that's pretty friggin', imp- that's pretty friggin impressive. Uh, now, with the world, like I said, the World Juniors, he won uh, silver and bronze. So, you look at that, World Junior medals, Olympic medals, Canada Cup medals, uh, Stanley Cup uh, championship, World Championship medals of all three stripes. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, tremendous. And as well as the GM for the 1996 uh, Swedish team, helped that team win a gold medal uh, at the Olympics that year. So uh, other accolades, Golden Puck, uh, Swedish player of the year in 1980, who uh, was named the best Swedish in NHL, which was an unofficial award. 85, 86, and, uh, you know, when you say Matt Nassau, you know, uh, nothing but quality, nothing but talent, nothing but success and everything he does. So, again, over two decades, all those world championships and Olympic and Canada Cup, high-level play, uh, he could have played a lot more teams in the NHL, but he was also dedicated to the Swedish program and the European program. I basically, if I had a chance to vote, I would put Matt Snaslin in the historical category. Again, it doesn't have the numbers, but, uh, you know, to, to see what he means to Swedish hockey, to see how we rebuilt the Montreal Canadiens, we all remember when Montreal Canadiens had those rough uh, playoff results. As soon as Snaslin uh, showed up, his totals were bringing Montreal to the next level. And he was the unofficial successor to uh, a combination of Steve Stratton and Gilles Lerner. Again, if he had somebody to play with, he would have had more than 110 points. But he didn't really have uh, the line mates. Can you imagine Pierre Terjol in these lines, Vincent Bamfou, uh, you know, uh, Brian Bellows, uh, Gilbert Dion, all these players. He could have easily 30 goal scores on a national line. But like I said, the NHL line got them because the Swedish League, you don't play as many games. Not the biggest player in the world. But again, the results are there. The, the, the success is there. Matt from Aslan, in my opinion, by the vote, I put him in the Hall of Fame just because of what he meant to Swedish hockey. I don't think many people, you can take the moan, well, you know, we only got so many points in the NHL and, you know, this and that. But if Dan Amansky makes it, you know, Matt, Matt Naslin is the back guy of Dan Amansky, uh, comparable. And uh, don't, don't forget, like I said, picking Swede and all that, I don't remember Don Cherry ever criticizing Matt Naslin. Naslin was a tough guy. He wasn't, he was never a dirty player. You know, he was playing something against the, the bigger players. He, was, he wasn't serious. Yeah, all the series he played against the Nordiques and the left, I mean, they were scared of him. He was, you know, he was a scorer, you know. Anyway, so in this COVID Sunday, the reason why I'm inspired to do this because I was watching the uh, uh, the 84 game in Montreal and uh, Quebec, and I remember what it was like to, to win that series. And two years later, with Nassau in the lineup, we won the Cup. Nassau was the, 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 the key we needed to win the Cup in 86. And again, 87 came close. To get to the finals. Terry Gregson made some bad calls. I heard it. And uh, 89, Calgary was a better team that year. So technically, Nassim could have got Montreal the three Stanley Cup finals in four games. Got to the final four three times in four years. And like uh, just like David Keon, Henri Richard, redesigned how people looked at the small players. 
So, ladies, gentlemen, keep your pick in the air. Have a good evening. Bye.